The Bluebot isn't only a great robot to use with the physical buttons on top of its head, it also comes with an amazing free app that you can use on the STEM T4L iPads. So let's go in and have a look at the software you can use with the STEM T4L iPads, the Bluebot app. Straight away you can see it starts on a start screen for the Bluebot. I'm going to click that orange start button in the middle of the screen. It then asks to connect to the Bluebot via Bluetooth. It's a really good tip to make sure you're naming your robots so they're easily to easy to find in this screen. I'm going to click that green connect button and that will find and connect to the robot via Bluetooth. If it doesn't find a robot, make sure your robot is turned on. And now it has connected to my blue bot and it will turn blue to say it has a Bluetooth connection. When you're ready to go, you can click the X at the top or just press go. I'm now on a menu screen, you can see there are three options. The first option there is controller mode. So I'm gonna click into that first orange button controller mode and let's have a look what we can do in here. Now the controller mode is a real time controller of the blue bot. As soon as you press one of the orange buttons, it will move our robot that it is connected to. So here I'm going to press the up orange button and our robot will move in real time in the scene. I can then pick another button like this right turn and that will turn my robot right. It's as easy as that. Now, this app isn't only just about controlling the robot when it's connected. It's also a great app to use without a connection to a blue bot um, that you can use just on its own. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do now is disconnect from my Bluebot to show you how easy it is to use in that way too. Right at the top right hand side of the screen, you'll see there's a Bluetooth symbol with a green tick on it. That means we're connected to a robot. I'm gonna click that button and it'll take us back to our connection screen. I'm gonna click the red disconnect button and that's gonna disconnect my Bluetooth connection to the robot. I am then going to click the X at the top right hand side and that will ask me did I want to disconnect that robot and yes we did so I'm going to click the grey cancel button. To get back to the main menu again I'm going to click the home at the top left hand side of the screen and now you can see we're back to the menu that has our three options. This time I'm going to go into the explore mode which is the middle orange button there. I now have four options in the explore mode and let's go have a look at each of these. The first one is called step by step. I'm going to click into that step by step button and I have an option to create a map for my screen. As you can see there's multiple maps that we can pick from within here. And down the bottom right hand side I also have a camera and a folder that I can pick from too. Now this is going to use the photos and the camera on the actual iPad itself to create our own map. I'm just going to take a photo of my scene. I have an option to reset or use, so I'm going to click the green use button. And I can change the grid size for my robot to move into. So you can see this grid is way too small for my actual scene. So I'm going to minus the columns with these green minus buttons. Um, I can zoom in and out as well. So I might zoom in there or zoom out over here. And then save when you're happy with your uh, map. If at any point you want to change the map that you're working with, there's also a green map button down next to the orange arrow buttons on top of the pencil that I can use to change my map again. So I'm going to click into the map and this time I might go and choose these letters. Now to start using this app, it will do a step-by-step -step movement of the robot as you build the algorithm down the left-hand side of the screen. To start off with, we need to put our blue bot onto our map. So down the bottom right hand side, you can see there's a picture of a blue bot. I'm just going to click and drag that picture and pop it on any letter that I want to. My name is Ryan, that starts with R, so I'm going to put him right there on the R in the scene. To start building our algorithm, all I need to do is start pressing the orange arrow buttons. So if I wanted to go to Y, which is the next letter in my name, I first of all need to turn right, 
And you see that it does that every time I press the button. I then need to go forward, forward. I need to turn right again, and I'll end up forward for the Y in my name. Now I'm starting to build my name, and you'll see also down the left-hand side that we have our algorithm starting to be built. Now it's important when you're doing early coding, generally with stage one and early stage one, that you start using these words in the syllabus, such as algorithm, that we are building down the left-hand side. So that is a step-by-step, -step, and let's go and have a look at the next option to see how it's different from the one we have. Now to go back to the explore mode, instead of going back to the main menu, there's actually a quick way to get there. Right at the top of our scene, we have four arrows next to the word step-by-step. Now that itself is explore mode. So let's click those four arrows and it will take us to our explore mode um, menu screen again. This time we're going to go into the second option, which is the basic programming. Now basic programming is different only in a slight way from the step-by-step -step instructions. I still have my letter map and I still need to make sure that I'm putting my blue bot onto the screen to start with. Let's build our algorithm. I'm gonna start with the R. This time you'll notice when I press the orange buttons, my robot doesn't move when I press them. Now this is the only difference between step-by-step -step and basic programming. The students will need to build their algorithm before the robot starts moving on the screen. Now if I press the big green go button in the middle, our robot will start moving and going through the algorithm down the left-hand side. You can see it lights up orange as it moves through that algorithm. That wasn't where I wanted to get to, so I need to edit my algorithm, and there's easy ways to start deleting some of the movements in that algorithm. So if I go back to that left-hand side, all I need to do is pick one of my movements and click and swipe to the right-hand side. You see that arrow moves away, lift up my finger, and now that arrow is not in my algorithm anymore. Now the algorithm in the blue box can have up to 240 commands, so it does go a long way down the screen. Uh, but there is movement arrows to move up and down as you're creating your algorithm from one point to another. If at any point your algorithm is not what you like and you'd like to get rid of it to clear it from the blue bot itself, we can press the blue X button just like we can on the physical robot itself. So I'm going to click the blue X. It will ask me, are you sure you want to clear this sequence? Yes, I do. And I can start it again. So there's two more options in the explore mode that we can use as well. If I'm going to press the arrow buttons again at the top, next to basic programming, go back into my explore mode menu, and here I have a repeats option. I'm gonna click into the third repeats option, and you, you might notice down the bottom left-hand side, next to where we picked the maps previously, I now have a little loop arrow that I can use to build my algorithm. Again, I'm gonna move my blue bot onto the R. I'm gonna build my little algorithm down the left-hand side of the screen. And this time I'm gonna click that green loop button down next to the maps and the pencil. You'll notice on my algorithm, it comes up with these gray dots. Now that's to indicate that I can start creating a loop for the algorithm that it can repeat those steps multiple times. So let's click on the third arrow and the top arrow. Now you'll notice it comes up with a little counter that will allow me to pick how many times I want it to repeat that process. I'm gonna repeat that twice before moving on to the rest of our algorithm. I can press go, and it will start looping through that first sequence, and then you'll notice there it looped again a second time because I want it to run twice. That's a great way to start introducing loops and decisions into our algorithms that are meeting those stage one outcomes. Now we did have one last option in the explore mode that we are able to go into. So I'm gonna clear my code using that blue X button. I am then going to go up to the explore mode arrows to bring up my menu screen. And the last option that we have there is for 45 degree turns. Now you'll notice on the arrows uh, at the bottom of our screen there, we now have two new yellow arrows next to the other ones that we can use for 45 degree turns instead of 90 degree turns. Again, you need to drag your blue bot onto the screen and click the arrows just like you would before 
but this time it's going to turn 45 degrees at a time instead of 90 every time you use that yellow button. You can still loop if you want to add a loop to your code and press go when you're ready. You'll, you'll notice there on the screen that he's now moving at diagonals instead of just the right angled turns that he was doing previously. It's a great way to add an extra layer of movement to the blue bot to get the different angles in the shapes that you might not be able to do just using the physical robot itself. There is one last thing we need to explore in the BlueBot app that is very interesting and challenging for the students for us to use. This is called the challenge mode. I'm going to click the home button again at the top left hand side. I'm going to clear that changes. And the third options here on this menu is the challenge mode. So let's click into the challenge mode, have a look at what's in here. Again, we have four separate options that we can use in the challenge mode. This time though, instead of actually building our algorithm, it's gonna give the students a challenge to complete when, they, when they're building their algorithms on the screen itself. Let's pick the first one here that says get from A to B. You can pick a difficulty level depending on the understanding of the code of the students. I'm gonna stay on level one and pick the orange go button. Now you can see on my map, I, you might notice that I have a green flag where the L is meant to be. This is the challenge in this get from A to B. The students need to code this robot to get to that flag to meet the challenge. In this sense, I can see that it's um, up, up, up again, turn left, move forward, and that should get me to the green flag. I'm gonna hit go. Let's see what happens when I get there. I've met the challenge. It says, well done, I'm very successful. What a coder I am. And I can continue moving on through the challenges as we go. As I said, there are four challenge modes. So let's just have a quick look at those without doing the challenges themselves. A quick way to get the challenge mode is to click the flag next to our arrow explore mode at the top right hand side that has the stars under it. So I'm gonna click that flag to bring up the menu. I'm now going to go into the obstacle. I'm gonna pick the difficulty level of two this time. Press go. You can see now I've got some traffic cones that are stopping my blue bot getting to that flag. I now need to work out a way to get around those cones to get there. Let's just have a quick look at the other two challenge modes. I'm gonna click the challenge flag button. Let's have a look at the fuel buttons. I'm gonna click three stars this time. And you may notice on the arrow buttons down the bottom again, some of them are now grayed out. I can only use the left arrow and the down arrow, and I need to get my blue bot to the flag only using those arrows. What a challenge for the students in these early learning classes to now have limited number of buttons that they can use to get their robot to the designated position. There's one more challenge mode for us to look at. So I'm gonna click the flag again at the top right hand side. I'm gonna go over to random instructions. And let's go to a level one difficulty. Now the difference between this one is, is now I have an algorithm already built for me on the left hand side. It says move forward one, two, three, four, five times. So my goal now is that I need to put the flag in a position that uses that algorithm to get to the flag. I'm no longer building the algorithm. I'm now understanding and debugging that algorithm and working out where it's going to end at that point. Again, this is an amazing challenge for those early learners to use that abstract thinking. So let's go in and put the flag in that position. Five places forward. You just click and drag the flag. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put it on the B, press go and I can see how successful I am at completing these challenges. Well done to me, what a great coder I am. So there we have the BlueBot app in its entirety. You can use it with a Bluetooth connection to the BlueBot itself, but it's a great app to use on its own as well. It's a free app, so you can use it with the STEM T4L um, iPads that come in the kits, but you can also put it on your iPads themselves and use it at any time you want to to start building that early algorithm understanding of those students. This video is part of a series of support videos all about the kit that you have borrowed. To find the other videos in this series, head to the learning library and visit the kit page for the equipment you've borrowed. 
You can also find the full list of support videos for all of our kit on the YouTube channel. You can also join us in the Yammer community. If you have any questions or you'd like to ask teachers how they've used the equipment in their classroom, then why not join us on the STEM T4L Facebook community? It's a closed group. You can ask teachers how they've used the equipment and also share the work samples that your students have created.